The new Police and Crime Commissioners, the PCCs, have been in the job for just six months now, but they're rarely out of the news. The Leicester East MP Keith Faz has secured a special debate tomorrow night in the Commons to throw a spotlight on concerns that in some areas it's not really working. So what do our PCCs make of it? In inner city Leicester, some home truths for a police commissioner. It's quite interesting for them. There's a bit of a phobia they have about police officers. Yeah. So, sorry, who has? All mothers. Mothers. Why they would they have a phobia they about cops? The enemy. They are the public enemy. So you see? It's, it's, it's Leicestershire's PCC, its police and crime commissioner, Sir Clive Loder, wants to change those perceptions. I was amazed by the level of mistrust between the youngsters and police. And these are not... He's also yeah, having to explain criminal. his new role as PCC. Prior to the election, hence the low turnouts, John, we, uh, you know, we did not excite the public about this. The police commissioners were elected on the lowest national turnout on record, but seven months since they took office is the role now making an impact on the people they're supposed to serve. Now they're there, why don't they let us know who's there and what they're doing for us? I'm sure the mechanisms are in place. I suppose what's really needed is for him to be more visible. As I talk to communities, interest groups and so on, they do get it. They understand now what PCCs could and should and I hope will do for them. <laughs> now the Home Office is floating the idea of devolving even more powers to the police commissioners, such as 999 emergency services, in effect bringing together the ambulance, the fire and the police under the control of one directly elected police commissioner. But this police commissioner isn't so keen, as he told me. All I'd say is I feel I've got my hands full, you know. Uh, I have been asked to do this job on behalf of the people who live in this area and it's a full-on job. Also full-on is the scrutiny of MPs. Keith Vaz and his Home Affairs Committee exposed early PCC crises such as in Lincolnshire where the Commissioner suspended his Chief Constable. A judge has described the decision that you took as perverse and irrational. I accept entirely the High Court judge's criticism. The issue is that the government says we have to wait another three and a half years for the electorate to decide. We think that the best way in which you can scrutinise is for the police and crime panels to be doing their job as effectively as possible. And when you set up a new organisation or a new um, set of initiatives, that you allow them to settle and you allow them to work, you allow judgments to be made about whether or not it needs tweaking a bit and so on. But for many MPs, tweaking the scrutiny of our police commissioners looks set to be the priority now. Well, joining me to discuss all of that is the Lincolnshire Police Commissioner, Alan Hardwick. And Alan, let's be honest, I mean, you had a bit of a grilling there from Keith Faz, didn't I you? I certainly did. And the, the clip that you showed there said that I agree with what the High Court judge said. Um, there was a but to that. Give um, us the or, but. Or rather, or rather, I hear what he says. The but is that... I didn't agree with him. Uh, our disagreement uh, was based on, a, on a, an interpretation of a very, very small point of law. But your chief constable is now being reinstated. Yes. The chair of your scrutiny panel quit after that select hearing. You've got, yes. a, in effect, a, a payment to find for, for the legal proceedings. Uh, it's not the ideal start to your period in office. No, but what would people have me do? You know, I'm elected by the, the people of Lincolnshire to be open and transparent. Um, and let me say now that in the, in the, in the private sector, um, a suspension is, you know, it happens, you know, it happens every day, it happens all the time within police forces, um, it does. I, I didn't look for this confrontation, this confrontation, uh, I didn't look for the original complaint, uh, the confrontation I didn't seek, um, it was forced upon me. So what's going on now? How do you mean what's going on now? Oh, what's we're, we're, now? I mean, we're you have kind of perfectly good relationships we, with your we ha chief I have constable. A perfectly good relationship. Lincolnshire is being policed efficiently and effectively. It's a gold standard for policing in many ways. Is Lincolnshire, um, uh, and financially it is one of them. We, no, man okay. we manage to police in, on, on less what, money than most other forces. In what way is it a gold standard? The, well, the gold standard applies financially. Is is, uh, is is what I would say. Apart from the fact that we have a you know a, a highly efficient and effective force. Highly efficient and effective. Let, let, let's uh, let's kind of touch on that gold standard again and you probably don't want to hear from him again but here's Keith Faz and his concerns about police commissioners. Lincolnshire has been a particular concern the way in which the chief constable was removed then reinstated by the court the 
commissioner then saying that uh, he would be gone in days and he's still there. We were concerned about Kent and some of the appointments that have been made in North Hampshire. Members of the committee expressed concern at uh, some of the political nature of the appointments, as they have done also with uh, Yorkshire, other parts of the country. So there seems to be only a very, very few areas that have escaped public interest in what's going on. Now, is Keith Ads right? I mean, are these teething problems inevitable? Oh, of course they are, yes. Absolutely they are. Um, the, the, the role of police and crime commission was introduced very hastily by the government. It wasn't thought through properly. The, the elections were held in the middle of winter. There was a low turnout. Not in Lincolnshire, I hasten to add. We, we, we had more than 15%. Um, so, we, you know, as Clive Loder said, any organisation as powerful as ours, and I'm talking about all PCCs, needs time to, to, to bed in. Time to bed in. But Pauline Latham, hasty. Well, I, I think we could have chosen a better time of year to have the elections, and if we'd had them at the same time as the county council elections this May... Well, that didn't happen, though, did it? No, it didn't, and I think we did make a mistake on that, mistake. and it would have been better, yeah. OK, what about the idea of transferring, devolving even more powers to the PCCs? Well, uh, the people in the jobs were only elected to look after the police, so I do have a concern that it will make too big a job. If you've got police, ambulance and fire, I mean, certainly East Midlands Ambulance Service is a huge job. So what do you do? Break it down into the different counties. But wouldn't that benefit from a directly elected politician running it? It might do, but not on its, not with the police and with the um, fire service as well. OK, Graham, you're a champion of directly elected politicians running important services. Uh, what do you think of the idea of greater devolution? Uh, I'm a, a great advocate of election. I think uh, having someone who the people elect to do these jobs is first class. Uh, it was, was introduced in a poor way, doing it in the middle of winter, without pub publicity, without giving the candidates enough uh, money to put, express their views properly. But we've got but, them. But is it, it working? Will, it will improve. Mm. And I think democracy does work. What doesn't work is select committee chairman, and I am one, mm. uh, sticking their nose in telling people what they ought to be doing. Is that, is that what you think Keith Faz is doing? I think that the select committee was probably uh, interested in this issue, but I think the public are the people who elect or... Uh, deselect uh, p uh, police and crime commissioners. That's the way it should be. Uh, we happen to have a really good one in Nottinghamshire. These police and crime commissioners, they're actually doing really good work uh, that people don't hear about. For example, the stuff that's happening on crime prevention. Yeah, but Getting out and about. Our, our police and crime commissioner appears at meetings all over the place. Well, what do you that's do? That's what Adam, we need the police to have that because proper I tell you what, scrutiny. Keith Farris says that as far as he's concerned, what police commissioners do is a complete and utter mystery to him. Um, well, it may be to, uh, to Mr. Vaz, but it certainly isn't to the people of Lincolnshire, and it certainly isn't to the, uh, the people who are represented by my fellow police and crime commissioners. Would you like to see more powers devolved to your office? If the Home Secretary decides that that is going to happen, then it will happen. I would be the first to say that it's, this is more than a full-time job. It's 60 to 70 hours a week. Um, maybe there's a synergy between the fire service and the police service, but I wouldn't go so far as to say that you know, a commissioner could take on the, the, the health service as well. It's a totally different uh, case. Now, I remember interviewing you um, before the election in November and you talked about transferring powers yes. back to the police in Lincolnshire. Now, given the Chancellor's statement this week, and we're hearing that there's going to be further pressure on the Home Office budget, um, that's not likely to happen, is it? Well, I can t as, I said, as I said earlier, in Lincolnshire, and I have an announcement to make on Monday tomorrow uh, about finances in Lincolnshire. In Lincolnshire, because of the way that we have managed our finances, I'm one of the few commissioners who can look forward to the future financially with some, with some confidence. With some confidence. Look forward and confidence. OK. Okay, Paulie, now you've got um, Alan Charles, haven't you, as your yes. police commissioner uh, in Derbyshire. Now, if you were writing his report card after six months, what would you say? I would say he's been pretty invisible. I've never seen him at anything. I don't really know what he's been doing at all. And I suspect that we're going to lose funding in areas that we, we've had funding in the past, like Alistair, Belper. I don't think there's going to be the funding in that area. Well, as he's not here to defend to himself, but what are you doing to ensure that doesn't happen in Parliament? Well... We're not doing anything in Parliament because it's not, we don't have a role except through the Select Committee, which is Keith Faz. There's this constant thing that central government sets stuff up 
and then they keep poking their nose in. It's the health service, it's the education service, it's police and crime commissioners. We've elected these people, give them the chance to get on and prove that they can do the job properly. Are you encouraged by that, Alan? I'm absolutely encouraged by that, that's absolutely right. I am elected by the people of Lincolnshire. I am accountable to them. Other people can scrutinise what I do. I do it for the people of Lincolnshire. Okay, Alan Whitehead, thank you very much.